really kosher, I suppose, for the 18th century because um, in those days everything would have been um, folded, jointed, and uh, and soldered. Whereas this is a pressed, a pressed tin. Um, I can't say they didn't have them, but most of the ones I've seen um, have not been of this nature. On the other hand, I do have a copy of an original tinder box, and both the lid and the base have actually been pressed, and they're not jointed. Um, the only thing that's soldered is the actual hinge on the lid. So as I say, I can't, I can't even say um, that this isn't kosher. Um, and this would have been an old lolly tin. Um, and it's been thrown in the fire and it's burnt the paint off. So there's no markings on it. And uh, it's made a good tinder box. And um, well, he's, he's got that one and he's still using it. So, um, you know, his choice. He doesn't have to have a fancy brass one or one with a hinge on it. Uh, that works fine and he's happy with that one. And uh, so that's okay. So there's an option for a tinder box. Basically any tin that has a reasonable seal on it will do. Um, the tinder box is used to um, smother out smouldering tinder after you've made it in the fire. You would get a pointed stick and you would get some plant tinder material and uh, which could be punk wood or anything like that and you you char it in the fire um, and then you put it into a tinder box and you put the lid on and then that will catch a spark anytime you want to make fire and that's what the tinder box is used for and you actually strike the spark into the tinder box to make your fire okay we've got the hardware we've got the tin we've got the we got the leather bags don't ask me where I got this material from it's actually silk but it's not a polished silk so it doesn't shine but it is pure silk um, and I sewed it into a food bag and um, I'm carrying some some dried oats in there. Um, that's one of my food bags. Again, material, plain material, sheets, pillowcases, things like that in an op shop are going to cost you next to nothing, possibly even cents, not even dollars. Um, and you can make these up. And it's a good project. If you want something to do, make those up. Similar bag again. Um, this one is a is a, uh, a pull closure. Got a piece of leather running through it. I just pull that leather, and it closes the top. Um, I wouldn't carry um, loose dry food in here, um, like oats or anything. I might carry dried apple or dried pumpkin or something like that in it, um, or I could use it as an equipment bag. Um, I might carry uh, um, a small kettle or something like that in the um, and the reason for that is usually to stop the soot off the bottom of the kettle getting on everything else in your in your bag in your knapsack um, so that's about that um, clothes wise um, you can find work shirts that are not buttoned all the way, they're only buttoned so far at the neck. Um, and if you take the pockets off, um, they will pass, they're a passable shirt, especially if you get one that's oversized. If you get one that's even more oversized, it will probably pass as a frock. Um, to wear over the shirt so that's something else you could look for in the op shops um, if you don't know how to make breeches you have the option of using a breech clout which again is just a strip of material and it can be as fancy or as plain as you like 
um, within reason, stay to to what was available, what was used in the 18th century. Um, but white men, uh, white Indians, and Indians used breech cloths, okay, or breech clouts. So uh, that's an easy option. Um, leather moccasins, again, the leather can be found in op shops, um, and you make your own. Um, if you don't know how to make your own, um, look it up on the on the net. Uh, there are videos. I've made some videos myself um, of making moccasins. If you follow that, it'll show you how. Um, I think that's pretty much about it, clothing-wise. Um, but leggings are the same. Leather. Um, I use second-hand leather. Uh, I didn't bother to go out and shoot an animal specifically for getting the hide off it and tanning it and turning it into leggings. Um, the leather was already there in an op shop, um, so I simply bought it. And uh, um, again, I think it was an old coat, and um, and I made myself some leggings. Um, I just spotted another another axe down here. Now I've seen these. Um, this this same design, um, I've seen them called broad hatchets. What they were called in the 18th century, I don't know. Um, I've seen one of these listed as 17th century, and I've seen another one listed as 18th and into the 19th century as well with the same design. Um, again, got this second hand. Uh, it's in great shape. Um, it's got a as you can see a hammer pole on the back and um, yeah it's a good it's a good little hatchet it's not terribly heavy it's probably heavier than the tomahawk that I carry um, but again it's a good option you know if you want something why go and spend sixty dollars on a tomahawk if you don't have the money and then say well I can't go out bush because I haven't got a tomahawk um, Go and find yourself something. My son's got one. Um, it was a nice little axe head that I found in a second hand shop. Um, I picked it up um, for only a few dollars. Um, I put a handle on it and he thinks it's great. And, it, and I was looking at axe heads yesterday. I, did, I realized that in fact it too was an 18th century design. Um, if it is 18th century, I can't say. It certainly looks as though it's hand forged. Um, the same as this one, and so it, it quite likely it quite likely is. Um, but like I say, there are other options. You don't have to say I can't afford to do this. Okay, you can. You do the best you can with what you've got, and um, this is entirely possible to be able to find one of these in a second hand shop. You don't have to do it all in one weekend. You don't have to go shopping and have to find everything. Um, people say, oh, my gear is great. You know, they, they look at the stuff I've got and they say, oh, it's terrific. But that took years for me to put together. Um, I got what I could get at the time. And later on, if it wasn't what I wanted, I, I improved on it. Um, I tried different packs until I found one that suited me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is what you do. Um, it takes time, and you need to take the time. You don't need to rush in and buy things and spend spend money that is just simply wasted because either a it's the wrong thing for you, um, b it's it's not authentic to your period anyway. Um, but you saw it in a magazine or you saw it on a video somewhere and you took their word for it without doing your own research you go out and you spend a heap of money on it and then you find that it's not right you can't take it back okay you're stuck with it <coughs> so uh, take your time do the research think about the things that you want when it comes to tools, think about the job that they're going to do, the job that they need to do. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about 
18th century living history or whether you're talking about modern bushcraft. I don't believe in these so-called bushcraft knives. I dislike the the uh, so-called survival knives with the saw backs on them and, and all this sort of thing. They're, they're too heavy, they're clumsy, they don't do anything right, they don't do anything properly, they, uh, they're not that great for cutting down saplings and they're not that great for skinning either. So why bother? Why waste the money? Get the right tool for the right job. You want to cut saplings down for making camps and trap traps, then get yourself a hatchet. You want a knife that you can use for survival purposes, for self-defense, for skinning and butchering and dispatching game, then get yourself a good butcher knife. Okay, and a good butcher knife does not have to cost a fortune. It can cost as little as four dollars in a second hand shop. Okay? So there it is. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think with, with that selection of items there, you can look at that and say, well, I can use this same, um, this same idea on the other things that I need. Whether it be a canteen um, or, uh, or any other piece of gear, I can, I can find something that will work for now until I can find the thing that I really want. And some of the things that I really want can be had. They can be found very cheaply in a second-hand shop. It doesn't have to be custom-made by somebody um, and cost a small fortune. Okay, in the end, you'll probably find that you'll end up with a better kit than anybody else who's spent a fortune on putting their stuff together. Okay, your fishing line that's made with hand forged hooks and a linen line will catch fish just as well as somebody who's got a thousand dollar fishing rod um, and the gear to go with it. What's involved in that is partly skill, partly knowledge about fishing. Okay. It's not necessarily about the equipment. If you want the proof of this, you only have to go back in time and ask yourself, how did Stone Age man survive with stone tools? How did he catch fish? How did he hunt? How did he make fire? Okay? He didn't need all that modern equipment. He didn't need all those gadgets. Okay? He managed quite fine. Thank you very much. You can do the same. Okay? With slightly uh, slightly better equipment than a stone knife. Okay, I think that's all I've got to say on that subject. Um, so if you want to get into something like that, whether it be bushcraft, whether it be 18th century living history, think about what those tools are going to be used for. Think about what you want those tools to do and then go out and find what you want. Okay, thanks for listening.